Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. As many of you know, I'm a mom, and this episode is for parents with children with disabilities, some of which may already be adult children. Sometimes we don't want to think about our kids' future without us. Oftentimes we're just busy trying to survive and get through the day that we don't have any more time and energy to expend on thinking about their future. But because we care about them, because we want the best for them, it is important to think about and to prepare for. On today's episode, we're gonna talk with a licensed financial professional and author of five books, Rick Knight. But before we jump into this episode, I wanna remind you to please subscribe and share. I'd also like to invite you to my private Facebook groups. And if you like what we're doing here on One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. I want to thank you for coming up on Chair Chats because what you have to offer is so important and needed in our community to set ourselves up for the future. And a lot of the times that requires our parents to take the first step for us when we're children with disabilities. Um, And I know you have such a passion for this topic. Um, you have built your career around it. You have a podcast about it. You have written five books uh, and you have developed a course for parents who have children with disabilities. And uh, I know we, you and I have had conversations uh, prior to this interview and you yourself don't have a disability, but I wanted to ask you so our audience can get to know you a little bit more and your heart because like I'm a believer in Rick Knight. Rick Knight is is a mover and shaker and and but it's from a place of 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 authenticity. Like there's a genuineness about why you're doing what you're doing. So I'd love for you to share with us why or how you got on this pathway to advocating for people with disabilities. Yeah, yeah, no problem and thanks for having me. Um as I mentioned before I one of the short answers that I gave you uh, a couple minutes ago is that I, I don't like bullies. Um, and But what happened if about uh, eight years ago, I had a client, I've been in the financial service industry for over 20, 23 years. And I had a client that I had to go get some paperwork signed on a Saturday, you know. So I go over to their house, we're in the kitchen and you know, and I'm telling them sign here, sign here, and this commotion, and this door flies open, and this adult male child comes in the door, on all fours, and uh, a nurse follows him in, and she apologizes, and you know, shuffles him back out the door, and I ask, you know, I, you know, do you guys mind me asking who was that? They said that that was uh, their oldest son. Uh, and I, I said, you know, you guys have been with me for almost seven years. You've never mentioned him. And they said, well, you know, someone at the church just told us, uh, you know, to just get a big life insurance policy, make him the beneficiary. And that's how we were going to handle it. And I said, well, before you do that, let me do some research. And when I started to research this and I was in the industry, I had access to every financial tool that you could come across. And there was, the cupboards were bare. There was so little information about um, family special needs planning. So I started looking here and I started looking here and it took me about 45 days just to get them the, the, the best answer. And that was talking to different um, uh, agencies and everything. And then uh, it, it, was like, uh, it was like a getting hit by a thunderbolt because these people were so grateful that they've had a plan now for their adult son who is not uh, verbal, 
uh, was barely ambulatory. And they just, it's, it's like they were so relieved. And I love personally having that feeling myself of being able to, uh, to, to provide that service. So I, I just, I just, from that day on, I, it was, it was like uh, I ate and slept it. And then I started getting involved in volunteering with different agencies and getting to uh, know other people and having, you know, I, the first time I had lunch with a group of P, uh, adults that were on the spectrum, first few minutes was very unique. <laughs> But afterward, after that, you know, you kind of get into it and you just started to I started to look at life through a different lens. Uh, mm -hmm. And that from that to this is where the books have come from. That's where the advocacy, the podcast, that's where uh, Servant Financial Group has come from. That is beautiful. And the reason I wanted you to share that is when we talk about finances and legal mumbo jumbo it can be very um cold right and and just like here are the facts and cold and dry and i just fell in love with the heart of why you're doing what you're doing be and your why is so important that it drives everything else and so people when they get to listen to your podcast or read your books or take your course they know that you're coming from a place of love. And I think that's really important. Um, I also know somebody who with a disability, he didn't have a developmental disability, his was a physical disability, uh, similar to me. And his parents left him a huge trust and in actuality it hurt him in the future because it prevented him from getting services that he, may, he, had, he needed as an adult mm -hmm. with a disability. So I think parents, are th are given some quick information that is not necessarily the best for their children and what you do through servant financial and through your online course that is available to anyone any any time at their convenience is you give them real facts that are backed up by your professional licensing and, and, and knowledge. Um, That's a good point. You make a good point um, about them having the resources and putting funds in a trust, thinking that they're with the, with the best of intentions. But if it's not the right kind of trust, and there are a lot of trust, but there's one trust that is specific to the special needs community and it's called a special needs trust. Um, and if you're, if it's not set up in that, then yeah, you can just dis easily disqualify someone from all of their governmental uh, benefit, from all of their benefits. Uh, so again, so having the right information, which is all over the place. I mean, it, it is, it's very difficult sometimes to just find something that's mundane uh, getting the right answer or the, or the best answer is the problem. You can get an answer half the time, but is it the best answer? Uh, because there is no uh, one size fits all uh, in, in, in the disability community. And a lot of the laws, well, I take umbrage with a lot. A lot of the laws were written as though there was a one size fits all. And that, and that is such a disservice to the entire disability community. Uh, so that's why, you know, the course and some of the other things, we try to break that down and separate that stuff out so that we can get you the best answer. Yes, and usually I wait to the very end to let people know where they can learn more about you. But I do wanna make a plug right now um, that you have put together through your own time, your own effort to gather all the information together in one place in a course that's digital uh, so parents could access it and customize what they need for their children. Because honestly, like one size fits all is like the the worst thing you could apply to people with disabilities. <laughs> that is, we, we, defy that. There's no one size fits all ever in the disability community. So Absolutely. I would, I would like you just to tell our 
viewers, where could they find your course or learn more about it to see if it would be a good fit for them? Well, to learn more about it, they can they can just go to yananation.com, uh, Y-A-N-A nation.com. And that's the acronym we talked about this, you are never alone. Uh, and send me an email from there. I can get, or they can just email me directly at rnight at servantfinancialgroup.com and I will get them all of the information that they would need. I mean, if there's a specific issue or concern or topic that they are uh, interested in, put that in the uh, information or in the email and, you know, and I'll, I'll respond and, you know, in a 24 hour cycle. This course, what is the course called? It is the Good Harvest Life Planning Course. Awesome. That is something that I would like to bring up towards the beginning of this interview because uh, this course is a tool to answer your questions. And if you're like me, I don't like adulting. I don't like feeling like I have to deal with finances and legalities. And sometimes it feels so overwhelming that I just shut down and don't want to deal with it. And I don't take action, which is never the best thing to do, but it is our, maybe our default human reaction to doing things that scare us or feel overwhelming or trigger any anxiety. So I do want people to understand that there is a tool out there that can take away any of that anxiety and overwhelm that you may be feeling. I wanted to address that too, Rick. What obstacles do you see uh, parents facing when they have to think about their financial and legal future of their children with disabilities? Well, especially during this pandemic, it's more of a financial survivorship course, but um, the course is broken down into four different modules, which uh, address legal factors, family support factors, uh, government benefits, um, and financial factors, but it's 76 sessions. And what the reason it's 76, it sounds like a big number, but let me, let me try and defend that. It, there's 76 sessions because we wanted to make it as user friendly as possible and not have all of this, uh, you know, this long drawn out, uh, you know, chapters uh, as opposed to shorter, more to the point, more direct, and with the uh, and trying to create an environment where it becomes a family empowerment um, exercise or activity. Uh, instead of, oh gosh, I got to go to set, you know, set session 44 to find this out. No, we created it where, you know, the whole family can get involved. And when I say whole family, I mean, aunts, aunts, uncles, brothers, everybody can get involved because from my experience, that it, that's how a family, a special needs family is. Everybody is kind of involved anyway. And this course, uh, and it fit one of the uh, one of the people that we had. This lady was great. I mean, she's a PhD music teacher, uh, taught at uh, Virginia Commonwealth, came back because her mom had, had, had was starting to suffer from Alzheimer's. So she moved back here. Uh, now her, you know, she was living in Maryland because that's where her other daughter graduated from college and was working. So it was her, uh, her and her daughter. And then she had a daughter with uh, a very, very severe case of spina bifida. She wasn't supposed to live past age three. And she was 28. And the mom had started to have health challenges. But... Um, when we did her her uh, special needs trust and some other legal documents, the older daughter was going to be, and if something happened to her, the older daughter was going to then become the primary caregiver. But she is, you know, 30, <laughs> trying to live her own life, you know, uh, and doesn't know the first thing about anything. This course would have allowed them 
in two different states even to sit down together and go through, this is how I want you know you to take care of your sister. These are the documents that you're gonna need. This is this, this is this. And if you, if you need to know anything, here's the login, here's the password, have at it. It really helps the entire, empower the entire family. Uh, and that was the goal uh, to, to take that fear out of planning for, uh, you know, and making sure that the, uh, the, the, the person uh, with a disability, their, their quality of life is not disrupted. This is, and, and it's on all the different platforms. People don't necessarily have to be in the same room, but just like if you, you do Bible study or if you're studying for uh, an exam or if you, de, you know, you devote an hour to reading your favorite mystery, or, you know, this is something that you can devote 30 minutes, 45 minutes to, uh, and, and it's got all of the uh, PDF downloads so you don't have to go trying to find, well, I need this document. No, it's right there. You, all you have to do is click, open it up, uh, print it or populate it and print it like letters of intent. That is a huge, uh, uh, you know, component in special needs family planning, but it gets missed about 80% of the time. Right. And here's <clears throat> the thing. You don't know what you don't know. So oftentimes when you start going down that yellow brick road of finances and legalities that you have no idea about, uh, you don't know, oh, I need to do this letter of intent and this document is important and this form is important and all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. I know as an adult with a disability, just doing different things for myself, it, it's like almost like a spider web and you have to, or, or like a tangled rope, you have to untangle and it, and you're sitting there following the thread and just trying to pull that thread out. And then it leads to another thread. And oftentimes uh, what stands in our way is the lack of information and not knowing what we don't know what to ask about. There's a huge lack of information. When I was, when I was um, doing some research, um, Hawaii has a 20% disability community as opposed to the national average, which is about 25%. And I mean, it's, for the most part, it's lower than all of the national average. The numbers are still high, but they're not as high as the national averages. And I don't know, uh, because unfortunately I've never been to Hawaii, not yet anyway. Uh, I don't know the layout and landscape but in the States, when you get into these rural areas in the United, in, in, in mainland, there is a huge information deficit. And that is from the largest, most populous state, uh, you know, uh, like a California or Florida, or, they still have these rural pockets where the information uh, there is almost non-existent. And those people, uh, they really suffer. And that's one of the other beauties with the course. It's online. It goes everywhere. It's, it's evergreen. It, it, um, it, it removes that particular barrier because I've, I've, I've had to go to small towns and it's been awful uh, to see the level of resources that they have and the types of, and the lack of services that they have. Mm -hmm. And and this sort of eradicates that and puts everybody on the same playing field. My parents, when they had me, like I was born this way, so they had me. I don't think they even knew that they needed to think about my future in that way, right? They didn't know to ask. They no one said, "Oh, he, by the way, your child has a disability. Here's the manual." Like as a parent myself, there's no manual on parenting, much less parents with, uh, with kids with um, disabilities, it's, it's uh, a lot of it is hidden. And if you don't know the, to ask for it, you're not going to, no one's going to volunteer and hand it to you. So this tool, this course, you may not want to put it out there, but I am going to ask, and I'm going to ask you to compare it to some hiring a lawyer to do it for you. Exactly. How much is how much is this course? 
The course is twelve hundred dollars. Okay. And uh, when you compare it, I mean, but you, you could compare it to a lot of things. Um, uh, a lawyer is a good one because <laughs> a consultation with an attorney is in the special needs sector is at least three times that. And that's just the initial visit. I mean, the initial paperwork or documentation. We, we chose the 12 uh, because it can be broken down into monthly payments. Uh, and there's 12 months in a year. This is something you don't want hanging over your head forever and ever and ever. Uh, so uh, we do it. The, and it's, it's it, again, I mentioned it's evergreen. It, 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 you have it forever. It doesn't ever expire. If the laws change or if something new happens, uh, it gets updated in real time. There's no, you don't need a, an app to update it or you don't have to download anything else. It, it, the course will update itself in real time. So you will always, whether it's October 7th, 2020 or October 7th, 2025, you will always have the most current information, the most current documents so that uh, when you're doing this, your who, whomever has the disability will always have the best shot at getting uh, the best quality of life. Understanding that it's evergreen, understanding that it will always have the most current information and accurate information. Like you said, people can get information, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's accurate. Um, and a lot of it in the special needs community is outdated um, because a lot, and this is, uh, this is another thing that really bothers me. A, a lot of those uh, individuals or organizations that went after grant money because they were a nonprofit. They threw up a website, cut and paste some information and just left it. And you go there and the information hasn't been changed in five years, seven years, 10 years. So that is a really important point is that the information stays current, that the laws stay current so that you have the best information uh, because that's where your empowerment is going to come from when, you know, you've got your own set of facts and your own documentation, uh, you know, and you're not and you know what questions to ask, because this is the checklist that, that I need for this. Uh, those are the those are the, the hurdles that keep uh, people in the disability community at home, keep them from pursuing this, keep them from self advocating. It's the information we just did. It launched it in July. And the feedback has been mind boggling because these parents who have been struggling, suffering, trying to get this from me, trying to find this out, trying to never heard of this. How do I do that? Now it's all at their fingertips at their leisure. They really got a kick out of it. I mean, they really uh, appreciate it. I mean, some of them were in tears mm -hmm. and I can feel that because you could just kind of the weight, because some of them were dealing with a whole lot of things. And the one thing that the course does not cover a lot, because we didn't know to cover it a lot, uh, was there's a, I know the statistics, I, but you know because I'm not involved in it, I just never really sat down and considered that person. And that's the uh, divorce rate uh, and the, the rights and the laws and what, because there's this one lady that went through the course, five kids, and three of them are disabled. And her husband, ex-husband, uh, the, well, they're in the middle of it, and he is moving to another state, and she's, you know, fighting for, you know, benefits for them. Uh, he, you know, he quit his job here, so now they don't have health. And I mean, it's just a whole lot of stuff that she was sharing that I, you know, I never really even considered uh, what she's really going through. So it's those type of uh, instances that really make it worth everything because now we can put that up and somebody in Hawaii or M Missouri can see that and, and say, okay, here's the information. Thank gosh. So- right. And, and it's going to be okay, right? Like sometimes we just need that assurance <laughs> that, okay, I just need to take this step 
and it's going to be okay. And then I can just take the next step and knowing that there's someone there walking you through it. I get it. I had one client, she told me, uh, she described it like this. She said, when I had my daughter and her daughter had cerebral palsy, she said it was like being shot out of a cannon. She was like, it, everything just started happening so fast and I didn't know where I was going to land. I think um, a lot of parents could probably relate to that. I can't even imagine what my parents were thinking and you know, not having any resources um, available to them. There are probably parents thinking, oh my gosh, I can't afford $1,200 right now. Um, maybe they've lost their job. We are in the time of pandemic at this recording. Um, so the un unemployment rate is higher. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that there was a, a payment plan, a monthly payment plan. Is that right. over 12 months? Yeah, we do it over 12 months. And um, also we started an, uh, an initiative, a sponsorship initiative, uh, where we're sending out thousands of sponsorship brochures asking corporations, asking government agencies uh, who have the financial resources. There's even funds we found out today here in Georgia that there's still some resources in the CARES Act that the, that the governor never used. Now, I don't know what he's going to use that money for, but he's got $20 million just sitting uh, somewhere. And, and, and it was a special, a special needs organization that was saying we need more tools. And this was just to educate their children because they're at home, they're falling behind. Uh, but corporate corporations, philanthropic organizations, even churches uh, that are willing to sponsor families. And, 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 you know, you get some that are more generous than others. Um, but uh, the sponsorship program was our way to make sure that people that they're, that they're ha had some challenging financial resources right now would not be left out from here to Hawaii to everywhere. That's, you know, the, the uh, sponsorship initiative is, is up and running and we'll ask anybody. <laughs> yeah. And then that's why your heart and the why behind all of this is so important because it comes from a, a place of compassion for parents. On one of the biggest stages, and they're trying to keep it under wraps, and I only follow it because <laughs> I'm in, the, uh, in this community. But when Aretha Franklin died two years ago, and I don't know if you were a fan of her music or not. Yeah. Her oldest son, Clarence, uh, is in his 60s. Uh, and he is severely mentally disabled. And she didn't have a will. She didn't have a special needs trust. She didn't have anything. And she had three other children that were awful. And now they're, they're, they've got nine lawyers involved in this thing up in Detroit right now. It's been going on for two years. They've even sued Clarence. And he doesn't even know that he's, you know, alive half, halfway. You know, he doesn't know anything that's going on. I don't even think he's verbal. But there are millions of dollars at stake. <laughs> and, she, you know, she just sort of left him out you know, to the wolves. And my fear is that some, when this is all settled, he's going to be in some home upstate uh, Michigan where nobody's visiting him and his mom certainly isn't there. And it could have been so much different because she had all the resources. I mean, after she died, they found a purse that had $750,000 in cashier's checks that she never took to the bank you know, an estimated net worth of maybe $60 million. And she could have taken six months and carved out something just for him, where if something, when, some, when something happened to her, that he would be protected. And that didn't happen. And I think that's a good point you're making, that it's not just about resources, because I feel like there are people out there who are maybe watching this, or knowing they have to do it, but they just feel like I don't have the money to invest in 
this type of preparation for my child. And we, this is a case of someone who had the money, but no preparation. So um, what your course does is it allows people who don't have the $60 million in the bank, like Aretha Franklin did, but to kind of to do what they can with what they have and start taking those steps. But a lack of preparation or ignorance to it, um, how many of us want to see our kids suffer because we did not take the time or we, we kept ourselves in the dark because of it? You know, and that's a great quote because I think some intentionally stay in the dark because if you stay in the dark, you don't have to accept it. Um, I, uh, I was a, a speaker at a special needs uh, going back to school dance. And I had my uh, board up with my services on it. And this lady, uh, she comes out and she's looking at it and she's going down and she's going through a mental checklist. I mean, I can see her head nodding and she just bursts into tears. And she says, you know, my daughter's in there. She's nine years old. See, she, she's nonverbal. She, she will never be able to live on her own. And she said, me and my husband haven't done anything on this, on this board you have here. And she said, because one day we think she's gonna wake up and just be better. Mm. And I was like, sometimes this stuff gets rough <laughs> to listen to. I mean, it just, it, it, something breaks on the inside. Um, and that's, that's a lot of parents. It's mostly, if it's a couple, it's mostly the husband that is in some kind of denial. You know, that no, well, you know, the doctor said like that 1%, the doctor said that there was a chance, you know, but a lot of times the, the mothers, once they get in that chair, they're, re they're ready to start making some decisions. There may be somebody watching this and they say, okay, there's a tool out there. It's affordable. It's convenient. I can do it at my own pace. Um, and they still feel really overwhelmed. What would you say to those parents? Well, you know, that was a big concern. Uh, and there's two, there's two buttons on, in the program. Uh, there's an Ask Rick button where you can always <laughs> contact me directly. But uh, the chief information officer is always at the beck and call to, to as, as many times as they need to walk them through any, you know, any part of it, to explain any part of it. Uh, this is this is again, you are never alone in this, in any anything that uh, is dealing with Yana Nation. And if there is that moment, which there could be, I mean, I get that, you know, if 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 I were uh, going to a foreign country and I didn't speak that language and all of a sudden I was trying to speak it, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it, I would be a little bit overwhelmed. So I get that part, but there is someone, not, not a, uh, a, a computer bubble that's going to show up and say, may I help you? There's a real person that will be able to answer and walk anyone through any part of the course that they just are not getting or, uh, and, and even before uh, the course, they can take a, 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 a 20 minute tour of the course uh, to get a better understanding of what they should be expecting. So I feel like there are no excuses, right? So no one can play the ignorance game or I didn't know I, what I didn't know. Like if you're watching this, now you know, and even though it might feel scary, even though it might feel like you feel like it's triggering some sort of anxiety around it, that um, understanding that you are never alone, Yana Nation is there to hold your hand through it. And I love that there, I, I love that there's 76. I know 76 uh, sessions sounds a lot, but that means they've broken it down into such digestible uh, pieces that it doesn't feel overwhelming at any time. So I think that this is a good uh, tool for any parent or guardian to use 
for to prepare for their children's future. Um, are there any other thoughts that you wanted to add to this? Yeah, I'll just give you some of the cold hard facts. Uh, when people are are wrestling with this, um, and and just considering that this is a a quality of life issue for their child, but just the cold hard facts. There's and, and you know take it with a grain of salt because the CDC, that's the resource they got muddied up here in the last 30 or 45 days. But the CDC says between 53 and 56 million people are in the disability community. 36 million uh, have severe disabilities and will never ever be able to live on their own due to the advances in medication and technology. Most will outlive their parent or guardian. And 59%, almost 60% of consumers say we can't find the information. It's too hard and it's jeopardizing our benefits. And if you look at, because people will focus maybe some uh, on, the, uh, on the price of the course, the average cost of a special needs trust, uh, it, it, because so few attorneys do them and it's such an important tool, you need to get it right. And I, I say this a lot, a lot of people would rather be right than get it right. And you need to be able to get this one right. Um, you're talking about somewhere between five and fifteen thousand dollars for a trust to set up a special needs trust, and it still may not be right because they because the information isn't there, and most people just don't have the energy. I'll say it that way uh, to go get it. So you know, given those facts. I, you know, I, I can't see, this is a let me sleep well at night tool. And if anyone, you know, is making the decision, you're going to, you, you, you know, you're going to leave your loved ones, all of them, uh, in one of three conditions, better off, worse off, or the same. This course allows you to make the choice to leave them off, leave them better off. Mm, and I love that, that that you have the power, you have a say. It's not like you're, you, you died and didn't know, you know? It's like you have the power right now to, that you can exercise. Rick, I wanna ask you, do you know of any stories, and sometimes those are the hard stories to see, where the parents did not prepare for their child's future and what happened to them? There's a lot of those, but I'll give you two quick ones. One, I, I was speaking at a, um, at a workshop, at a library actually. And uh, I finished up and a woman, she was in her early seventies and she came over to me and she, she's crying. And she's explaining to me that she's got a 51 year old son who's severely mentally disabled. She's not, He's, he's been, you know, she's been his primary, his only caregiver his whole life. And she was um, terminal with cancer. She hadn't done any planning because she just figured she would outlive him. I mean, that was her, the whole plan. You know, he, he had all these health challenges early on. She just figured. And now she was asking me, what could she do? Because she wasn't going to be around very much longer. And I had to tell her at this point, there's not a lot that we can do. Uh, I also had a, a parent in which she ended up surrendering her daughter uh, to the state of Georgia, nine years old, eight, eight years old. She had moved here from Alabama, was in a bad marriage there, moved back here. Her family said they were going to help her. When she moved back, uh, and this is another thing, resources. She didn't know who to contact, who to get in touch with, where to go to get any type of help. And, uh, it, you know, listening to her tell me about that whole, how it went. You know, when you surrender the, how clinical it is. Uh, and it's something that you never, 
get over. You know, this was someone that was with her for the first eight years of her life. And she was in such a dire strait that she felt that her only recourse, her only answer was to give her child away. So it's those type of, you know, you, you just said it, you're in charge with the, with the course. You, you're, made, you're in the driver's seat. And with any child, whether they uh, have a disability or not, you want to always be in control of the decisions that you make for your child. And what's happening a lot now, it, it's a big issue with uh, conservatorship. A lot of parents are not getting conservatorship and then their children are getting hurt or getting arrested when they're past 18 and they don't have any say anymore. And, and the, just things like that, that, you know, people have, you, you said, you know, people don't know what they don't know, but you do not want to be on the other end of that. And I love how in your course, I got to take a little tour of um, Rick's course, The Good Harvest Plan. And you, you mentioned to me when you were giving me that tour, there was a certain number or statistic of how many people with disabilities that are turned over to the state. And I'm gonna ha have you tell me that number in a minute if you remember it. Um, but one of the things that is in the course that it allows you to do is it allows you to specify for your child, he likes the color blue. He doesn't like spaghetti or he really enjoys jello or he really likes to do xyz before bed or you know it gives it, it allows you to put um, and communicate your child's personality and when when the child is just given over to the state without as a, as a commodity they're not seen as a person it's very like you said rick it's clinical and it, they're just a number and it doesn't matter what their favorite color is or that they like to play with Hot Wheels or, you know, what their favorite meal is. It, and, and I think it's important that we remember that this, these are humans. Exactly. Um, and that's what the, that, is, that you're mentioning, you're talking about the letter of intent. Some people call it the letter of instruction. Uh, I consider it the owner's manual to the child because it can be as comprehensive as you want it, or it can be as, you know, as it can be one page or it can be a hundred pages. Uh, I did one where the couple, they were both dentists, um, their daughter, nonverbal, um, she was uh, uh, legally blind, she, and the, but they had in the letter of instruction if something happened to her, who, you know, they're the guardian, had to take her to Paris once a year. Apparently she loved Paris <laughs> for whatever, <laughs> for whatever, you know, that Paris did it for. And, and they, they put that in there. They put, uh, you know, uh, the, the color schemes in her. I mean, they, they had a very, their, their letters of instruction was 36 pages. And going back to what you said, Georgia has had about 3,000 children surrendered to the state last year because the parents said they couldn't afford them or they didn't have the resources or family support. And some of these are life and death situations depending on the severity of the disability in the child. Uh, because if they don't get certain treatments, uh, spina bifida is, is, is a, uh, a huge one uh, because you can be paralyzed from the stomach down where none of that works and there's a ton of infections. Uh, so, you know, when you can get all of those things addressed or at least, you know, get, get, get in the uh, mindset of, oh yeah, I never thought about that, but there it is right there in front of you. Uh, you know, it, it, it really empowers you. It makes you feel so much better about, you know, about what you're doing, what you are having to tackle in life. And you know, at the end of the day that you've protected your child and made sure that they, they're going to continue to have uh, 
you know, the same uh, level of care, the same value, everything. I mean, because you, religion goes in this thing. Anything can go in there. And, you, and, you know, you want to, it, 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 it's, it's a human, you know, the, the value of life. Um, that's, I mean, if you can get that, that box checked off, that's more than half the battle. Yeah. And it's kind of like we all have house insurance or car insurance or health insurance. This is like the insurance for your child. Um, and it's not just in case it will happen one day your child will be without you. And it's a harsh reality, but it is reality. And it's important that we don't ignore it um, and that we take the steps. You know, that, that's a great point when you mention uh, auto insurance, life insurance, health insurance, you know, which auto insurance, health insurance are requirements. But not only that, um, you know, you don't look at it as an expenditure. It's an investment. Just like any of those other, uh, other, and just like a mutual fund that you would go, against. it's an investment. It's not something that, as a matter of fact, it'll increase in value. It's not going to uh, decrease in value. So if you can look at it that way, it makes your decision almost a no brainer. And then that's what I would let, hope that if you're viewing this right now and you're a parent of a child with a disability, I hope that you are educated a little bit more from this conversation about what can you do next. And for me, it, it feels like it would be a no brainer that what is next is to go to yananation.com and purchase the course. And perhaps um, you feel like it's something that you can't afford. If you did the monthly payment, it's $100 a month. Um, or maybe it, like he, like Rick said, this is a whole family exercise. Um, and oftentimes it involves the whole family when we're, um, when it comes to our children, it takes a village. That is, that is truth <laughs> as a parent. I know that. And, you know, maybe it's as a family, you can all chip in together. And that and not only that, if, 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 if you're there in, you know, because you may have people that listen that are outside of Hawaii, but if you will, you know, say, look, I'm in, I am in Hawaii. Uh, I can't afford it or me and my family can't afford it, but we will reach out to some of the agencies there. I mean, <laughs> I don't have any problem in, in saying, look, uh, whatever agency, this is something um, you know, because we would really like to integrate this into the schools and the library systems uh, so that uh, actually train the librarians so that people could come to the library and say, show me this course, take me through it. Uh, but, you know, with the COVID-19 and everybody is looking for digital content, nobody is, no, there, there's no buildings that you can go in quite yet. Uh, and that's that makes it difficult for people that act that you that the library is their their only resource center. So that hopefully that is something as soon as you know the world turns a little bit more uh, back to normal. That's something that uh, we can uh, because I had approached the libraries. They purchased my books, put them in the libraries, and literally the day I delivered them is the day they shut down. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Back in March. Are your books uh, available on Amazon or is there somewhere else that people can purchase? They, they are online on my website. Um, we have not put them on Amazon uh, as of yet. So if anyone is interested, they don't want to take the full plunge into the course because they're not really sure who this Rick Knight guy is yet. Um, you can go to the website, check him out there. It's yananation.com. I'll link all of his website, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, email, all in the show notes. So um, you can get to know him there. Also, speaking of digital content, you do host a podcast called Yana Nation. Yana every Nation. Yes, every Saturday, right? Every Saturday morning from 10.30 to 11. And it is... 
the only uh, podcast in the South that's exclusively for the special needs community. Our goal is to educate, advocate, elevate, and celebrate the special needs community as a whole. And we've been doing that about two years. Love it. And I listened to it um, and it's such great energy. I, again, like I said in the beginning, I get finances, legalities that sound, sounds all dry and cold, but Rick brings a warmth to it because of who he is. And so I would encourage you to check out his podcast if you'd like to get to know him and his information better. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, and it's not, it's not all financial on there. We've had um, Babies Can't Wait. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. We had the executive director of the Down Syndrome Association. We've had uh, the Alzheimer's Association, Autism Speaks, um, cerebral paul I mean, it's what we try to do is check all four of those boxes, educate, advocate, elevate, and celebrate every week. And when I do not have a guest is when you get all finances. <laughs> <laughs> but you deliver it in such a beautiful way and easy to listen way. And so that's, that's what's important. Take the sting out of it, put some fun into it and make yeah. it easy to listen to. Yeah. And you're, you know, like you said, it's like speaking a foreign language. So it's like translating to back to us in our language that we can understand. Um, maybe that seems so far removed from us, but um, it brings it down and grounds it into um, bite-sized pieces that we can, we, we can understand and, and take in. So check him out there. Again, I will link all of this in the, in the description box below. Um, I want to hear from you. Has this been helpful? And is there any other information related to parents of children with disabilities that you'd like to have me bring on the show? I'm happy to do that. I want to bring you resources that are relatable to you. Uh, because look, your children are going to end up becoming adults one day. And they are part of this beautiful disability community. Uh, and there's so much potential. And sometimes it just requires the parents to set the child up with the resources they need so they can live into their fullest potential. So let me know if there's any other topics that you'd like me to bring to you regarding um, as parents with disability, I mean, parents with children with disabilities, um, let me know. I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, also, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share. And I'd like to personally invite you to my private Facebook groups. I'll also link them in the show notes. And if you like what you see here on One Leg Up Productions and you'd like to show us some love, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Chair Chats. And until we meet again, be blessed.